Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and today we're going to take a look at ultrasonic cleaners. No, it's not a repair, this is actually a mini review. I've bought myself a brand new ultrasonic cleaner, a 9 litre one. It's much bigger than the original one I had, which is a cheap Chinese, I think it's about a 3 litre one, something like that. Um, I'm working on some bigger boards and I actually needed a, a larger ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, this little one there, it physically wasn't big enough to hold the boards that I was looking to clean. So I went and bought myself a brand new one. I didn't buy it off of eBay, I bought it from uh, Allendale Ultrasonics here in the UK. So I'm hoping it operates a lot better than the original one. So in this video I'm actually going to go through the technology, how they work, and then I'm going to actually compare them. I've got two boards here that I've sort of, um, soldered up here. Identical boards using identical solder and flux etc. And I'm going to clean them in the two cleaners and uh, compare them. So let's get going. So here we are in front of both units. Cheap Chinese one on the right, my new one on the left. The cheap Chinese one says it's a digital ultrasonic cleaner but basically it just means it's got digital controls, a digital timer and a digital temperature readout and control. Uh, but nothing fundamentally different between that one and the one on the left. And what they consist of, you've got a lid and you've got a basin really, a little basket here for putting your items in that you want to clean and basically a stainless steel basin here. You can see the depth of the unit here compared to the depth of the basin. That's because the underside has got all the electronics but more importantly it's also got the ultrasonic uh, actual head itself and these are mounted attached to the bottom of the basin there so that the sound pressure waves produced are transmitted directly into the liquid itself. The cheap Chinese one's got two of these and they're about 50 watts each something like that so you're talking about 100 watts worth of ultrasonic cleaning power. The new one on the left there it's got four of these so it's rated at about 200 watts ultrasonic cleaning power. So with your transducers mounted on the underside of your tank, the sound pressure waves at 40 kilohertz are transmitted into the liquid through the bottom of the tank and it's these compression waves in the liquid which tear the liquid apart, leaving behind millions of microscopic voids or bubbles. That's the cavitation. And it's when these bubbles collapse that enormous amounts of energy is produced but because the bubbles in, are so small it does little more than clean surface dirt and contaminants off of the object that you're wanting to clean. And the higher the frequency the smaller the distance between the cavitation points which effectively makes for more intricate cleaning but for PCBs 40 kilohertz is ample. What about the cleaning solutions? Well, back in the day we used to use Freon. It's a CFC so you can't really get it any longer. But it used to be brilliant to, at cleaning and it worked great with ultrasonic cleaners. You didn't even need any heat. You just topped up your tank with Freon, chucked in your PCB and a minute and a half later your PCB was spotless. Every single bit of flux was removed from the board even between ICs, under ICs, etc. It was spotless. But of course nowadays you can't get the likes of Freon. So now we have to use things like this here, the flux remover and PCB cleaner uh, solutions. Uh, yeah, they're, it's basically a, a, a soap really uh, that you would add in a 1 to 10 ratio with uh, uh, deionized water into the tank and it's that combined with a heater maybe running at 50 60 degrees C and the ultrasonic cleaner it will clean flux off of boards. It might take a little bit longer than the old Freon days but it does work. Now I've got this exactly the same cleaner solution here obviously the same that deionized water so I'm going to run a test here I'm going to put the same solutions into both tanks. I've got my two circuit boards here that I'm going to try and clean in both of them. I'm going to see how they both work out. Okay, I've topped up both units with deionized water and I've got the cleaning solution installed. Uh, I've just got the power on and waiting on both units getting up to 60 degrees C. So as we're waiting on both units getting up to temperature, you can see a blue 
tinge to the colour of the water, that's obviously the cleaning fluid in both units there. So whilst I'm waiting on getting it up to temperature, I've actually got a little test I'd like to run here. So let me just set that up and then we'll come back. So what I actually wondered was, is there a way to measure the uh, ultrasonic power being transmitted into the water? Well, I came up with an idea. I don't really know if it's going to be much good, but I thought I'd give it a bash. This is a piezoelectric cell here, um, and instead of applying a voltage to the piezoelectric cell to make it buzz, that's what these piezoelectric buzzer cells do, I thought I'd reverse it. What would happen if an ultrasonic frequency was applied to the plates of the cell, would I get a, a voltage on the output? So I've set up a multimeter here, I've got it in AC, uh, let's dip it into the solution, into the water when it's running and see what we get on the multimeter here. And then we'll try the same on the cheap Chinese unit there. So let me just dip it into the water and turn it on. So it's getting about 0.55 at the max there. It volts AC on the meter there. So let me just move across to the cheap Chinese one and I'll do exactly the same again. Point two seven at its highest there. Wow. I think that's hopefully demonstrating that the uh, Allendale unit's a lot more powerful than the cheap Chinese unit. You'd expect that. I mean, this is a, a four transducer unit compared to a two transducer unit, 200 watts versus 100 watts. Okay, whilst I'm waiting and the ultrasonic cleaner's getting up to temperature, I've got this PCB here. This is a an old ultrasonic cleaner, uh, believe it or not, and it's a pretty filthy board. It's got some white residue on the back there and it's got some, I don't know if it's a conformal coating that's gone bad uh, on the actual PCB on the top side there. Certainly not got the same kind of coating on the bottom side. So I thought I'd just uh, throw that in the Allendale one and just see how we get on with that whilst it's heating up. I just chucked it in and gave it about six minutes. Uh, turned it over halfway through and this board is pretty good. It's, it's that funny kind of residue coating that was on the top side there is basically completely gone and on the other side there there's an odd sticky little bit of uh, flux or something left over but basically this board all that white residue that was there is gone now as well so I'm quite impressed uh, with this board anyway having been cleaned thoroughly uh, with the Allendale ultrasonic cleaner and using the Allendale solution and at 75 degrees anyway so Next thing, uh, I'm going to try chucking in my PCBs. Okay, that's both boards done, dried off. Let's take a look at the results. So I'm going to zoom in on the cheap Chinese one first. Down at the bottom left there. And there we go, you can still see there's quite a lot of flux around those pads there and there's speckles of flux around about those pads as well there and to touch it's a look it's sticky it, you know it looks like uh, it's almost kind of reacted with the water or something and it's kind of just got sticky and it's not really come away i think maybe if the flux had been a bit drier for some reason then it may have fallen away but I don't think that's happened it's just got sticky and stuck to the PCB and it's not really pulled it off so if we go across to the Allendale one it's better but it ain't perfect there's still some residue the same stickiness to the flux there round about the pads so ah, not 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 impressed as much as I thought I might be. I thought there'd be chalk and cheese between the Allendale one and the uh, cheap Chinese one. So whether I need to increase the temperature, um, looking at the actual specifications for the 
Allendale cleaning solution that I was using. It does specify between 50 and 80 degrees. Now I'm actually running it at, uh, at the lower end of that, around about the 60 mark. So maybe I could up the temperature a bit. On the other hand, maybe I need to try a different uh, cleaning solution. So in actual fact, I think I'm going to do both. So first things first, I'm going to up the temperature and let's give it another go. Cheap Chinese one first. These large pads here and these small ones round about here, which I just soldered up a minute ago. And um, you can see that there's still some flux around there, but definitely the higher temperatures helped with that Allendale cleaning solution. Um, still, like I said, still a bit of residue. You can see see some round about there, there, and especially around that big pad there. So let's move over to the other board from the Al Allendale unit. And it's reasonably cleaner. I wouldn't say it was a lot, lot cleaner. Certainly, I don't really see much uh, residue, maybe a little bit round about those pads there, um, but again, I think the higher temperature helped that uh, solution uh, to work much better. The other pads on the board that I'd previously soldered up and tried to clean, they're a lot cleaner as well. If I just zoom down a little bit there, you can sort of see this area here, which is what I previously soldered up, and that's certainly a lot cleaner. And looking at the cheap Chinese one, Again, it's better than it was before, but there's still some residue, more than there is on the other board. So I think the next step is I'm going to try a different uh, cleaning solution and we'll see how we get on with that. So I've re-soldered up a couple of boards. Again, one for the Allendale unit and another one for the Chinese unit. I've gone over a whole load of the joints again, so there's, so there's plenty of flux everywhere. And it also uses some flux out of a syringe that, that I usually use for surface mounting. And it basically, it's just everywhere. I don't know if you can see that, if I can catch the light. So it'll give it quite a good test. So again, like I said, I'll do once one in the Allendale unit and another one in the cheap Chinese unit. And we'll see how we get on. Right, so I'm going to give... Electrolube Safe Wash a bash here. It's a Safe Wash S, SWAS. I say that because there's seven different types available in the Safe Wash um, series. This one here, it doesn't require dilution. You buy what you need and you stick it straight in the tank. So we're going to give that a go. So I'm going to do two minutes on one side of the board, then I'm going to turn it and do two minutes on the other. So let's pop it in. Lower it into solution, stick on the lid, and off we go. And the cheap Chinese unit, again, two minutes on one side, two minutes on the other. And off it goes. Okay, that's both sides done. Take the board out. And give it a clean in some distilled water here. Also helps cool the board down because I mean it is at 50 degrees. And I'll dry the board off and let's take a look. Well, to be fair, both the boards are about the same. There's virtually no residue at all on either of the boards, the Chinese one nor the uh, Allendale one. So I guess it's down to the cleaning solution that I was using. It appears that the safe wash is uh, chalk and cheese over the uh, Allendale um, cleaning fluid. So I guess I've given the Chinese one a new lease of life there. Um, of course, it's, like I said, I still need the Allendale one for the bigger boards. And I suspect it does clean the boards in a lot quicker time. Probably half the time, something like that. So there we go, there's a test of both my ultrasonic cleaners there and I'm right glad I did it because I've now found a, a cleaning solution that works a lot better than what I've been used to. Uh, like I said previously I was using the cheap Chinese cleaner here with the Allendale cleaner and I was having to scrub the boards by hand. You might have seen that in one of my previous videos. Now I know I can use the Safe Wash Electrolube stuff in either of the cleaners there give it a couple of minutes on both sides of boards and my board's going to be pristine. I'm still going to use a cheap Chinese one, believe it or not, 
but not with the electrolube. I'm going to use that with straight distilled water. Um, because I work down in the microvolts on some of the boards that I work on and some of the projects I work on, I want all the residue possible, even the cleaning solution residue, completely eradicated from the board. So the idea is I clean in the uh, Allendale unit with a safe wash and then put it in here with the distilled water and give it a couple of minutes there and that will get rid of absolutely every contaminant and every bit of cleaning solution off the board. So that's it. Hope you like the video. Catch you next time.